Welcome to Asa Latina. Today our guest is Patricia Lopez. She is the CEO of Rosalie Technologies. And with us today is one of the topics that we're going to talk about is actually STEM and also manufacturing. So it's really good to have you on the show, Patricia. And I'd like to start with asking you a little bit more about your journey, how the business started, how you got started with it, and um, tell us more about it. So when I was born, my grandpa owned a sheet metal stamping company <laughs> that my dad worked at. So he would work there all day and go to school at night. And I didn't get to see a lot of him, but we would go and visit him at the factory mm -hmm. and he would bring home his homework and print packages to work on quotes. Mm. And so he would teach me algebra because that's what class he was taking at the time. And he would teach me how to read prints. That's great. Um, and t when I was 12, my grandpa passed away and unfortunately his business wasn't able to stay within our family. So my dad opened Elmhurst Industries that does sheet metal stampings and fabrications for the automotive market. Mm -hmm. And with that, I spent all of my time there. Um, mm -hmm. My evenings, weekends, school holidays, summer breaks, right? It's where my family was. It's where we just were as you're launching a business as an entrepreneur. You just dedicate your heart and soul to it. Mm -hmm. um, and then I went and left and got a job at Chrysler for about five years. And I returned to the family business. And in 2013, my dad offered my sister and I the opportunity to open Rosalie Technologies. That's great. And we offer engineering services and prototype manufacturing, primarily for the U.S. government. Oh, that's really good. And then I understand that you were also president of a women in defense organization. Is that correct? Or is it? Yeah, yes. So great. I'm past president for Women in Defense. They're a nonprofit organization that focuses on the professional development of women within the defense industry. Wow, that's great. So what's kind of the statistics of how many women are in the industry? Is it still kind of low? Oh, for sure. Mm. For sure. Um, you know, I remember going through engineering school, you would see like there would be one woman in a class of 30. Mm -hmm. um, and I would say that in the defense industry, it's it's really about there, especially with the technical degrees. It's, oh, wow. It's it's rough. Yeah, that is. What, and then manufacturing. Now, you're also, um, I understand, well, first of all, you're married. You have two kids, correct? I do. And your husband is from Mexico. He is. He came oh. up here about 20 years ago. Oh, okay. So. And he's involved with manufacturing as well? He is. He works at my dad's company. He's okay. a press, um, he's the press room supervisor there. We met mm -hmm. there and fell in love there. Yeah. yeah, that's great. So the statistics with being so low with uh, in de women in defense, as mm -hmm. far as manufacturing and engineering and STEM in those areas, um, that's pretty critical. And I know that one of the things that we want to do is encourage Latinas to go into STEM. One of the mm -hmm. things that we do is the science, technology, engineering, and math, because those are important. We do this Latina Empowerment Conference. Mm -hmm. And uh, we encourage Latinas. So it's really important, and this is a great opportunity to be able to have them learn from you Mm -hmm. um, what was your journey? What's important things? And I know one of those things is that um, education. Yeah. You, you, you also were in college. You went yeah. for education as well, right? Yeah, I have my bachelor's in mechanical engineering and my master's in manufacturing systems. Okay. okay. And then you are also the uh, you are the director for STEM for NDIA, which stands for the National Defense Industrial Association. Okay. Um, I'm their STEM director for their Michigan chapter. Okay. NDIA is a nonprofit organization that creates a conversation between industry and government mm -hmm. to make sure that we can advance technology for the warfighter. Mm. Um, what a lot of people don't know is because of our proximity with the automotive industry, the majority of ground vehicle engineering um, for the defense industry occurs right here in Michigan. Wow. And the size of that industry is approximately the size of the automotive industry. Wow, that's pretty. Yeah, yeah I remember way back there used to be General Dynamics and yep. GM was involved in that. So yep. it's interesting. And it, you're right, a lot of people probably don't know about General that. General Dynamics is still here. Yeah, they're yep. still around. <laughs> people probably forgot about them. <laughs> um, what are some of the fields in STEM degree that high school students should consider and why? So I would like to say anything with engineering, um, whether it's mechanical, electrical, computer, programming is a huge initiative, but then there's also the more manufacturing side, mm -hmm. right? Because mm -hmm. necessarily like getting a degree isn't for everybody. Mm -hmm. And so welding, CNC operation, um, wiring, robotics, mm -hmm. all of that is very practical and mm -hmm. the opportunities are huge for it in industry and many, many um, businesses, they'll actually pay for you to get your degree 
Yes, I've been hearing about that, especially the energy con the energy um, industry is doing the same mm -hmm. thing, um, that they really are in need of young employees mm -hmm. and uh, they're willing to do that. So I didn't know that's the same thing in manufacturing. Yes. So it's really great to for hear sure. that. Wow. I actually, I reimburse all of my employees for any of their education. That's wonderful. That's great. And then when they go through the education, what are they pursuing? Um, um, it depends. Um, some of them is CNC operation. A lot of it is welding. I have one young man that I'm sending to engineering school at Wayne State. Oh, wow. That's great. Um, because if you don't develop them, um, yeah, what and we do? need those skills. And I know I, I just uh, locally I saw a mechanic looking for mm -hmm. a mechanic, and I mm -hmm. thought to myself, way back there used to be these classes in high school, mm -hmm. the wood shop and the other things, yeah. and now that doesn't exist anymore. So it's really kind of and some do, but not everyone. You have to go right. to a vocational school to get that when you're in you high do. school. You do, you do, and it's usually just you know one elective, one mm -hmm. year. Um, yeah. But what if it's something you really enjoy working with your hands? Mm -hmm. I know I do. Yeah, yeah, so. I think it's great. And it's a really, it makes you marketable in, like mm -hmm. you said, in just about any industry. For so sure. that's wonderful. Yeah. Um, so tell us about the program that you are doing there. You are um, the director for STEM. Are there mm -hmm. any programs that they have, uh, the association, specific to uh, a certain grade level for um, students to get a scholarship or? or other things that they're doing, mentoring, what's going on in that area? Yeah, we do, we have two major initiatives. We have sponsorships and scholarships. Our sponsorships is actually just about to open mm -hmm. um, and it'll close before the end of November, but oh, okay. that is K through 12th grade. We offer funding for um, nonprofit organizations mm -hmm. to build up their STEM programming. We offer funding for different schools, That's great. Um, robotics teams, science Olympiad teams. If a school needs to request transportation mm -hmm. dollars to get to, um, like a tour of General Dynamics, let's say, um, we will offer that transportation. Mm. Um, for scholarships, we offer scholarships to graduating high school seniors. And this year, our goal is to get um, five students from an urban area or a minority classification because it's really hard to connect with the schools in those areas. So that's something that I'm really pushing for. That's really good. Um, yeah, um, in so many of those areas, the kids really don't have that opportunity and they're not aware of what's out there. So right. it's really great that you're going in there and getting able to help them transport them to somewhere where they can see all the opportunities that are out right. there. And that's really important. Um, Latinas in, in high school or anyone who wants to start a new career, what, opportun what are the steps do you think they should take to prepare to go into manufacturing engineering as a field? You know, that's a, that's a difficult question to answer. Um, there's always more than one way to get from point A to Z. Mm -hmm. um, when it comes to preparing yourself to get into manufacturing, a lot of times women think that I can't do this because that's traditionally a male's, a male's field. Mm -hmm. And so what I recommend is get that out of your head. If you're interested right. in something, just own it and be who you are that's and right. have the confidence to go forward and pursue what it is that you wanna do. And don't be afraid to make a suggestion or really lean in in the mm -hmm. company. Mm -hmm. That's good, that's good advice. And I know you mentioned math. So math mm -hmm. is really important to pursue because it sounded like you were mentioning that you were doing that with your dad. Yeah, and it is. And, you know, females, they tend to think that um, they're not supposed to be good at math. Or, I mean, I remember in high school, I would say I'm not good at math, but it was the one class I always did really well in. Mm -hmm. um, and it's because that's what that's what we have set up in our head. And so yeah, tear that wall that down. Mm -hmm. And when you when you want to learn something, you're you're going to. But there's also a lot of people around that are willing to help tutor you, educate mm -hmm. you, give you tips on how to get through it. Yeah, reach out. There's always resources out there. You just have to ask. That's all. So. Right. Um, I, I um, wanted to ask a little bit more. I normally ask my guests to speak in Spanish, but because the show is in yeah. English, um, are there some bilingual programs that you might be considering and, and these things that they're going through to reach out to more of the community or? So I've started to connect with different organizations in Detroit okay. on how to connect them. Um, in the defense industry, um, they, they, it's a very, it's a very diverse group of people, mm -hmm. um, but usually if you're not an American, mm -hmm. they think that they can't be part of it, but that's mm -hmm. that's not the case at all. And they do have people that are bilingual. Um, at my at my father's company, they have bilingual supervisors because of the amount of Hispanics that we've hired there. Mm 
Um, so there are those things available, That's but good. we'll provide resources where it's necessary. It's also becoming a global economy. At some mm -hmm. point you might be doing, or at least your OEMs are doing business overseas right. and in South America and Mexico, so mm -hmm. having that language capability is pretty important, I imagine. Yeah, they're always hiring translators. Um, mm -hmm. It's one of their huge needs in the defense industry. Mm -hmm. A lot of the, the manuals, the tech manuals that they write, um, translators don't have difficulty finding jobs in the defense industry, actually. Yeah, that's interesting. Mm -hmm. But it'd be really nice if that was a combination of someone who is in that industry right. as an uh, engineer and also bilingual, I imagine. Correct. Right, there's for sure power in that, yeah. right, the more you know. Yeah, that's really good. Um, so, uh, is there anything that you would advise uh, us to be able to tell a young student or uh, someone who might want to change careers? Because mm -hmm. I know one of the things that you did was you went from your business mm -hmm. to a corporation and back, and that's a really good experience to have. Um, what were the pros and cons, and what would you advise someone who's considering doing one or the other, either you know going from a, their own family business to a, a company mm -hmm. or vice versa? Yeah, that's a, that's a good question. Um, I left the family business and went to the corporate environment because I was going to take on the world, right? And um, that, was, that was truly my goal. Mm -hmm. um, but when I was at that corporation, my heart wasn't in it. Mm -hmm. um, and I knew that the whole time. And so when I chose to leave and go back to the family business, it was kind of heartbreaking because um, I'm very goal oriented right. and I just, when I want to achieve something, I figure out a way to achieve it. And so I had to re kind of define what it was. I had went to school for engineering, but I really don't do engineering as a business owner today, mm -hmm. right? I'm, right. I run You're my managing business. managing people who are engineers now in that position, right? Right, and yeah. I have friends that went to school as school teachers mm -hmm. and now they're engineers at General Dynamics, <laughs> right? So don't be afraid to try something new. Don't let whatever you, you think your path is supposed to be, right, don't let that right. guide you to where you wanna go. Yep. Because that's the that's the great thing about living is that every day is a new day. Yeah, it's good. And it's definitely always good to have an education in your pocket because mm -hmm. you've got something to back up on. Right. And like you said, you can be just about any different kind of field or you can even switch different professions. Right. But um, anything is possible. Well, thanks, Patricia. I really appreciate you being my guest today and yeah. sharing with us your journey and all the advice you gave. Um, it's definitely great to know what you're doing in the community. I really appreciate Appreciate it, and we hope to see more. Well, thank you very much for having me. Yeah, thank you. Well, this concludes Ask the Latina. Thank you, and join us at another show that we have in the future. Thanks.